So let's talk about something really fun that I love talking about. Let's crystal ball here. Tell me about something cool that you're working on, something that's going to excite me in the community and we can get involved. I think that cool thing what we have is, is IoT, what we showed at Austin when we showed in front of 7,500 people how we can manage whatever we want. So not just the smart city and running open contrail in each lamp, but putting them into smart factory, industry 4.0. And I think that technology is evolving. And if you look at the Kubernetes and, and these kind of technologies, you can see that in the future, you will not care what's your virtual network, what's your IP addresses, or what's the security group. You just will care about endpoints, the service endpoints. Here is my service, here is running, and the orchestration tool and SDN orchestrator prepare everything for you. And I think that automation is, is going. I think we would like to have a full visibility of what's going on on your network, not just for VMs, bare metal, containers, everything, right? One of the things that everybody struggles the most when we have a problem in the network is exactly finding out what is, a, what is the issue. Having a full visibility, a full dashboard when actually there is a red line that is blinking and saying like, hey, here we have a problem. This VM, this container, whatever it is, is actually sending more traffic information that this is expected to be, there is a problem, there is an attack, there is something potentially that is happening to your network. And you actually can figure it out in a simple step instead of having the whole army of engineers putting together in a war room and say like, mm -hmm. what the heck happened last night that actually we couldn't sleep and now everybody is freaking out because they don't know what's going on. So um, it's still happening, whether it, whether it is the technology, the hardware, the data center, there will be still things that you need to figure it out. Having that magic mm -hmm. dashboard with everything is given to you it's what we like to see in there. You guys made it easy for me. So <laughs> cool things that we're looking at. Exactly what you said. So we're actually trying to bring machine learning to that solution, right? So actually come in and say, you know, of these million logs, what actually happened here? And as you build patterns over time, so we're trying to build machine learning into the operational challenges, right? So rather than pass logs with regexes, right? If this thing happens, this is what happened. So we're starting to, you know, we're working with the machine learning team to actually look into what's actually happening on and predict what might happen. So I think that's a big avenue for operators to actually hook into machine learning and take the next step. So predictively looking and actually cutting razor through those hundreds of logs you get from hundreds of services and saying, here's the thing that actually happened, not these subsequent things. So disk failures, we're already looking into predicting this is probably at the end of its wear. So I think machine learning, plugging them into these operational platforms, I think that'll be a big endeavor. Our mantra is automate the automator. So actually you want to go and do uh, solve new problems. You don't necessarily want to be in the trenches solving the same problems all the time. So self-healing, so let's talk about that. So I think one of the other things, if you follow what the public clouds are doing is serverless, right? We live in this world of boundaries and obviously there are boundaries on the back, but let's provide interfaces that are boundaryless, right? You just know you need this much compute. So let's talk about what's serverless. Let's look, talk about open source serverless. What's that look like and how are we solving the serverless problem? Let's think in endpoints, let's not think in walls or dividers. Let's think I have an app with this much resource requirement. How you service that is up to you, up to the scheduler. Let's not think in, I need three containers. Let's just think I need one gig of RAM and this much compute. Where you get that, I don't, I don't care necessarily, right? As a user, you don't care if it's three containers or a VM. So actually, I think, I, actually, as a user, you shouldn't even know. You shouldn't what even is know, the right? So this is, you can call it serverless on the front, but I think the lambdas in AWS and, and those kind of technologies in Google, I think they're going to, trickle back down to, to the open source community. I think that's a really interesting thing. Now, I'm gonna go for, go for the big one here. I had an in interesting conversation at the user group. It was somebody who works for a satellite company and he's talking to Open Contrail about solving networking and communication problems, not only above Earth, but interplanetary, right? And this might seem like a joke today. We're gonna laugh at this, but you know, as we go down to the road, landing on comets, looking at Mars, <laughs> looking at all these things, I mean, you guys laugh. I mean, there is a communication problem that's gonna to need to be solved. If we start getting our hands in there, what's to say we don't 
solve those problems with this platform. What's to say you don't put your sensors on Mars and when they're terraforming it, uh, you I'm, figure out how much oxygen's there on I, your I'm, sensors? I'm not laughing because last time I laughed too. Last time you laughed at me, <laughs> you, we're, we're at this table right now talking about it. So I, I think there's a big space networking problem that's gonna come, come to pass. And I think it'd be really interesting to be able to actually take these learnings and let's take them to one and a half second round trip time. Let's take them to 15 minutes round trip time. Let's figure out how that looks. How do we get Raspberry Pis on a comet? MPL, how do we... MPLS in every family. Every, MPLS in every family. So what I want to highlight is don't limit what you're thinking about with these platforms. Two years ago, you said no way. Now you're on stage saying, look, we did it. We're saying no way to satellites or maybe interplanetary connect or serverless, but in two years we'll be laughing at the fact that we laughed at this. So don't limit yourself and this is something we'll build on. And if all these communities make an effort to actually integrate a little bit better, it will be way easier for any new scientist to start working on these technologies. As a scientist, I don't have time to learn technology, networking, cloud management system, etc. right? I want something that is going to be so natural that actually I can put it in practice to make reality all the communication Absolutely. that I want from Mars, Absolutely. from whatever what you want to come in from. Tim right? Bell and the guys at CERN did, right? They had the Hadron Collider. How do they process right, that much really data, are. right? Yeah. They didn't have an infrastructure to do that, but the cloud brought that. So we have these frameworks that we can build on. They're all open source. We get the collective knowledge of the world behind this. Let's solve these problems to enable the scientists if it may, or the medical fields, whatever. Back in 2007, 2008, when I was completing my PhD, I was in queue for the Super Data Center in Barcelona to run my test. You know, it took me like one month to actually get my opportunity to run my system for five minutes. Nowadays, with these technologies, with all the elasticity that we provide, actually, you don't even need to be in the queue. You actually could run your application, your yeah. test, your simulation. Here's the API. There you are. Done. Yeah, it's fantastic.